Hey guys, Beats Hero Plumbing here, and today I am here with my unknown year Kohler Barden Urinal. Uh, what's interesting is this one actually came from China, and I cannot find a barcode stamp on it anywhere, and there's no date stamped on it anywhere either that I could find, which is really weird. If I had to guess, it's probably late 90s, early 2000s, but I, I really don't know why. I've never found a Barden where there was no barcode date stamp because basically every Kohler fixture has a, like a, a stamp on the side of the bowl like the siphon jet channel or and sometimes on the Kohler Bardens there'll be a date stamped underneath here but for whatever reason there is like no date anywhere on this urinal. Now I got this urinal from an abandoned nursing home. I actually filmed the place with this urinal installed before I was able to get it. I will leave the link to that video in the video description if y'all have missed it but if not then most of y'all should have known where this came from but i have it on a sloan regal flushometer and it is like a one gallon diaphragm i believe i really don't know but uh, and of course i have to adjust the pressure with this not the control stop because it's facing backwards and i eventually do plan to build a much better setup because this whole thing is just kind of annoying so um yeah right now i have the pressure turned up to about how it flush installed so Here's a flush. Also, I do apologize if any of y'all hear thunder in the background. There's been a lot of storms lately, so it's kind of hard to avoid them at this point. Uh, one thing about these barred urinals is they definitely have plenty of bowl rinse, uh, which is something I do like. Now the strainers are kind of nice, but they get gunked up and then they can cause the urinal to overflow. And I actually took that urinal screen out and the entire trapway was just caked with these minerals. This is just some of it, but these things are like stones. Like it's, it was really bad because when I first flushed it, it was just like the water level would stay. It would not go down. So I ended up taking that off with the screwdriver and it was just caked with minerals. So I was able to get most of it out. Um, What's funny is, I don't know why, but every time I see one of these urinals, they flush like there's no water to it. They always just trickle water. Like, this is about how I see them installed in public restrooms. Not even that, more of like something like that. That's usually how I see. They always trickle water and they're never very powerful. I don't know what the reason for that is, but I guess just some places think this saves water, or I don't really know, but I see a lot of them installed in public places that flush like this, which honestly kind of ruins it, but oh well. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the pressure up quite a bit. And then after that, I'll turn the pressure all the way up. Here is a flush. As y'all can see, that was pretty powerful. Um, I don't know if it sprayed out the front a little bit, it might have, but on full pressure, this thing does kind of splash quite a bit. Mainly because all that water rushing down from the urinal is hitting that strainer and it causes it to splash. So now I'm just going to go turn it all the way up and I'll give y'all another few flushes. So here we go. As y'all can see, it literally splashed out the front. Not horrible, but and if even though with this thing in there it still splashes when i take it out it's even worse because the water just kind of glides down completely misses the trapway and then shoots out the front so when i took that off and flushed it on full pressure it sprayed out even worse but here is another flush from an interesting angle here we go So yeah, with, uh, with the weaker pressure, like the weaker the pressure is, the longer the flush lasts, only because uh, the higher the pressure, the more water pushes out at once. So even with the pressure turned all the way up, it's still using the same amount of water as if it were turned down way low. But of course, on lower pressure, it takes a lot longer for that full one gallon of water to trickle through. So now I'll give you all another flush viewing the rim jets, just so y'all can see. Here we go. Now, I've never been a huge fan of washdown urinals just because they don't like siphon or you can't really do tests with them and they're not very interesting. It's still a urinal, so I personally 
uh, I think this is a cool urinal. A lot of people don't like them, but if the pressure is turned up right and as long as it's clean or well-maintained, usually these things don't have a problem. Just a lot of people don't flush urinals and especially the public restrooms that have the automatic flushometers. When the batteries die, most people just walk away from them expecting it to flush, but it doesn't. So I'll give y'all a few more flushes. Here we go. The one nice thing about having a smaller pressure tank for urinals is I don't have to wait as long for the tank to fill the flush these because even though this is a wash down urinal, I still have it on the pressure tank that way I can overpower the flush just for fun. But this urinal literally flushes on a garden hose. So here's another flush. I did turn down the pressure just a little bit. It's actually still pretty powerful. So I'm gonna turn it down even more. And then once all that water drains out of the bowl, I'll give y'all another flush. Alrighty, here we go. So yeah, overall, again, in my opinion, this is a decent urinal. Um, I like all the generations of Bardens. They didn't change too much, but I also like the new Stanwell that kind of has like an Albrook style trapway, but yeah, I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, leave y'all's comments down below, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.